So since I started my channel, I've learned a lot about Canada, interesting things about the country. And one thing that was really prevalent in those videos was Canada's influence in space, space exploration. And I'm going to be learning more about that today. This is a historic trip through Canadian space exploration with astronaut Chris Hadfield, who I know is another legendary figure within Canada. An amazing astronaut. I've seen a lot of his videos from space. He's very funny, very intelligent. Uh, very humble as well when I seen him being interviewed. But I really want to know more about Canada's role in space. Tell me what you know about it. What part of that are you most proud of? Let's watch this. Canada's a nation of explorers and space exploration is just the next inevitable step. Canada started exploring space in 1840, where now there's the University of Toronto. We built an observatory. We were curious, why do all the compasses point to northern Canada? And where do the northern lights come from? When the Russians launched Sputnik, the whole world suddenly realized, we don't have to just look up, we can go up. We should start trying to understand space directly. And so starting in 1957, Canada started working on its own satellites. We named our first satellite Alouette, and it launched in the early 60s. It made us the third country in the world in space after the Soviet Union with Sputnik and then the Americans. Next came Canada. Do you think Canada's role in space is underrated in the world thing? Because again, at this sort of time period, all we ever heard, and not that I was alive, but looking back in history, it's all about the USSR and USA in their space race, but Canada being the third country, I think that's an incredible achievement. Uh, is that underplayed, underrated? It allowed us to deploy an antenna called the uh, Storable Tubular Extendable Module, or STEM, and it became a standard for all satellites all around the world. And when NASA started building the space Great shuttle, importance. they needed someone to build a huge robot arm. They hired those same Canada brilliant arm. people to build the Canada arm. It's a beautifully elegant Canadian design that can grab onto satellites and assemble things together and only takes about the same amount of electricity as one light bulb. Not only does it represent our country by the great work that it does, but right there, printed on the side, is the word Canada. We built that Canada arm. Yeah, that's fantastic. And how is that remembered today? How is that thought of? Is that still like one of Canada's greatest achievements? I think it's so important, again, to space exploration. And yeah, such a great thing. I never knew about it until I started watching these videos and started this channel. So it's like great to know. I was so lucky to be the very first Canadian to operate Canada. Mm. It makes me smile just to think about it. Mm. Canada flew in space a hundred times. It released the Hubble telescope and then grabbed it again when we fixed it and improved it. It helped build the Russian space station Mir. And we are so respected for building space robots that when it came time to build the International Space Station and it needed a huge permanent space robot, Canada was trusted to build the space station robot arm, Canada Arm 2. Cool. It's bigger, it's more powerful, it has more joints. It can walk all around the outside of the space station like an enormous centipede. It becomes so important and iconic for Canada that we represent that arm on our $5 bill. I actually never knew so there was two Canada different ones. Not only did Canada build the huge Canada arm for the space shuttle and Canada arm two for the space station, but we built Dexter. A, a dexterous manipulator Whoa, that's cool. up on the space station permanently. And it has helped us build the space station, maintain the space station, but also do research. Right across Canada, it's the brightest star in the sky. After the sun and then the moon, the next brightest thing up there is the International Space Station. Mm. Our huge robot arms, piece by piece, assembled this enormous human outpost that's orbiting our world. Canada arm on the space shuttle would reach into the back, pull out this huge new piece of space station, hold it up, and then Canada Arm 2 on the space station would reach down and grab this piece like a, a Canadian handshake in space, <laughs> and then cool. attach it, making the space station bigger and bigger and bigger over time. It was a multi-decade project. Julie Payette was our first Canadian on the International Space Station when she was helping to build it right around the turn of the century. And since then, Canadians have visited the space station and lived on the space station, and in my case, even commanded the International Space Station. Yeah, respect to all these people, the Cirque du Soleil 
founder was Canada's first space tourist. That's really cool. Julie Payette, the first Canadian to board the ISS. Dave Williams sent a, sorry, spent a record-breaking total of 17 hours, 47 minutes outside during an ISS mission. Incredible. And Chris Hadfield, again, like I've seen him before, I'm sure everybody knows of him and uh, his importance. What a guy. Canadian astronauts have been flying in space since almost the very beginning. Bob Thirsk and Bjarni Trigvison and Ken Money and Roberta Bondar, and then the very first Canadian who flew in space, Mark Garneau. And with each step forward in, in invention and technology, Canada becomes more capable of exploring the rest of the universe. We are the world's leading robot builder, and it came purely from the legacy of what we'd already put into space, from our very first satellite right through to Canada building space stations. I'm Chris Hadfield, explorer of space, explorer of ideas. Exploration is Canada. Yeah, that's a really cool, well-produced uh, little video there. Really nice animations and things, and just very concise and formative. Uh, really showing like uh, Canada's importance in space exploration. I only knew about the Canada Arm. I never knew there was a Canada Arm Two. Dextra, that one. Like when I seen the image of that, it's like so cool. I can get maybe that comes from like ambidextrous or something maybe because of. They, there was like arms can go everywhere, but the way they can all connect with each other, as I said, a decade, decades long project or projects, and they all kind of interlink and work together. Great foresight or just great innovation. Uh, and so important, not just for Canada, but for the world, as I said, helped on Mir, uh, helped on the International Space Station. Like without that, probably they couldn't have done those repairs so easily and things like that and uh, like all the research that they conducted with those uh, innovations as well so unbelievable man I really I felt like some pride there myself man just I guess maybe from a humanity standpoint from the world view it's just so fantastic to have those so I can only look forward to see what's coming next from Canada in this area tell me what you think can come next is there anything Canada's working on uh, and tell me what your thoughts are on Canada arm all the Canada arms and uh, like someone like Chris, Chris Hadfield as well. Thanks.